will be my first time actually running the DEF CON. Usually, you, you all know we have Steve Soley that runs these, and um, you know I am I am no Steve replacement, but I am I'm trying to get. But you are here, and he's not. <laughs> I'm, I'm here. Um, one really wanted to get this rebooted. I, I really enjoy this part of the show. But this is a, you know a little more technical. You know, learn a little bit more about the inside of the machine, and not so much about just you know the app people are building the. To, to play MP3s or, or whatever the case may be. Um, so we've got, um, you know, we got our four sessions over the next two days. Um, um, Brian Carpignano connected us with Camilla, who, uh, this is my first time meeting Camilla, so hi, hi Camilla, it's good to meet you. Hi, hi, nice to meet you. Uh, so with that, maybe um, Camilla, I can just turn it over to you and you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Yeah. yeah, so um, I had a Amiga since 86 or 87 or well, whenever 2000 came out. And yeah, uh, then I had a long hiatus when Amiga wasn't so hard anymore. But uh, a couple of years ago, I got back into it and I've been contributing to uh, Amiga 3.2, uh, especially the text, edits, uh, text editor. It's in there, and also the, the reaction interface of the icon edits that came out in Fig Two One, and uh, so for the past year or so, I've been working on CodeCraft, which I will come back to later. That's not part of the OS; it's it's a standalone open source software. Um, and uh, in my daily life, I also program C plus plus. Uh, doing image analysis, uh, uh, medical, uh, yeah, field. Um, so um, yeah, uh, this talk, is, of course, is about uh, programming on the Amiga OS directly. It's it's no cross compiling or anything. Uh, so the the program I made here, CodeCraft, which we will be using uh, today in order to, to work it, is, uh, as I said, open source. And apart from that, as you can see in, in the back of me, I've uh, actually had a lot of uh, boxes produced for it, which I'm selling on, on the website, CodeCraft. So please, if anyone uh, wants to buy them, this, this is it, very, very nice. There's uh, even a disc following along with, with a label on it. It's all, all in the original design. And I don't know if you noticed, but those four boxes over there, they're actually not co crack boxes, but some of the original boxes, fix crack and stuff like that. So it's completely similar. So yeah, I, I hope someone will, will buy it because I have a lot of money and even if I sell all of them I think I all have lost anyway so please just just buy them if you and if and if anyone in, in, in the US wants to, to make some kind of uh, bulk order and distribute it uh, to save on, on shipping please get in touch touch as well. I know the, the shipping for the US is pretty good. Yeah so that's that's part of the um, the overall thing here, what we will do when, once we get into to program practice actually to program a, a window or, or actually it's going to be a complete uh, application. Uh, I don't know if any of you know uh, Git, uh, probably you do, I haven't heard of uh, at least. And another one I'm, I'm talking to sometimes, he is uh, working on the Git client for uh, well, the Backbone for for having Git on Amiga OS 3.2, and although so it's it's not anywhere near, and it will probably never be like full blown and do everything like Git on, on other machines, it's it will at least be able to check it out and, and, and yeah push and pull and stuff. So so my idea for the topic what I wanted to program today was uh, a. A UI, uh, some of you may know uh, programs like Git uh, K, uh, Git 
reduce tensions and, uh, and stuff like that, where, where you get initial representations of, of all the, the, the commits. And although all we do today, today will not actually work on, on Git itself, it's, it's about the, the, the GUI of it, then at least uh, this is what it will be. So I could turn into because yeah, I had to have some motivation for, for developing today, so, so that is what we do. But yeah, without much further ado, let's actually get started and, and, and do some, uh, some coding. That sounds great. Um, I just want to say that I love your choice of packaging for CodeCraft. I always like the, the transformer and the text edit boxes and that staying in alignment with that look and feel is, is, is quite quite great in my opinion. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, annoying, I can't get that away. Maybe. I just, yeah. No. That looks good on our side when you do that. Yeah, but it comes back up as soon as I... Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, so... Um, I don't know if you can see my... share my screen. Um, let's go and turn my camera off. Okay. I hope you can see my screen now. Yes. yes. Yeah. So... Uh, so I, of course, uh, have installed CodeCraft already, and I'll put the icon here on the box. Um, it's simple to install if you want to do it yourself. And I actually just uploaded, like, an hour ago, uh, a new version of uh, CodeCraft, which is 6. We're still in uh, alpha, so you may run into issues, and I know there are some issues that can only be fixed with, with an update to video OS itself, so bear with us there. I mean, yeah, I have, a, I have the inside scope, so of course I, I will make the, some, some of these fixes uh, in due time. Uh, so but it, it, it does work even, even in 3 2 one I just may have to restart sometimes. Um, yeah, so when it, when it come, comes up, this is this is what you will see uh, uh, an empty project tree and and some information uh, browsers down here and over here you have the what I call the, the make file browser which which uh, we will see later on but uh, the text edit so in here it's itself it's the same as text edit on on three two one so. These things are just put up uh, on top of text edit, and in fact, CodeCraft is an extension into the text edit. So we're actually launching text edit, but making sure that that, that all of these extras are in as well. So what these extras does uh, is, is that they add three new menus up here, and they actually also add a new menu item there, uh, and I think that's that's it. Yeah. So projects over here, that's about the individual files that, as you know it, and editing and simple highlighting here as well. So project three is is uh, your call it uh, entire program, all the files. So once you have uh, something you have worked on before. Like CodeCraft itself, we are actually developing CodeCraft inside CodeCraft, very meta. So, um, and 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 once we bring this up, it will remember the files that opened the last time, so it will open those again for you, and even place the cursor at the right position where I left off. And you have these uh, lists of all the files that are in your project, and once you later on. Uh, choose to create a project, uh, so then the output from it will, will, will come down here and, and if there are any uh, errors in it, and there are some warnings, uh, show once it's done building. So if you were to 
to say uh, previous message or next message up down here. You can uh, actually there's no warnings. Uh, okay, so okay, but if there were warnings, you could you could uh, step through them down there, and 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 if, in the, if you were to click on them as well, you could step into the program where where the the, the, the bug bug was. We will see that soon. Now, uh, it's like uh, the other one. Um, yeah, and then once that, that's that's the building part, and, and this is the overview of, of your uh, project tree, uh, as I call it in this year. And and which files are shown here? That's actually sort of a, a file browser, but it shows only the C files and H files, and a simpler file as well. And which files it it shows is something that you can set up for the project tree uh, parameters. For example. Thing in here, and then you can say oh, you want to see C and H files, and S and S files, and H files. So, so but what, what you type in here uh, in, in standard uh, uh, wildcards, then that's, that's what you receive if these files exist. So, and, and then also in, in the builds here, you can set up how you want to, uh, what, what makes this project build, and, and you in this case, we just say, okay, we want to, to run uh, SMAKE, which is made by SASC, and there are make tools called SMAKE, but you can write any other tool or even a script if you have that. Uh, so it's completely agnostic to, to what kind of uh, build system and make files you have to put behind. You could use it with uh, basic compilers or any, anything else. You just need to, to write your, what is your, your build tool. Uh, Make to whatever you call it. And of course, you don't have to write anything, but if you don't make a clean command here, then then, then make clean up here will not work, uh, obviously. So, and for reasons, you can actually, if you were like writing a uh, postscript file or something, and in, in this in here, say building maybe, or, or later on running. Could actually just show your your uh, open program that, that will show your post file and then you could use it like like like, like an integrated tool to 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 write post files if, if that's all it's shared or whatever you want to do. So it doesn't really care about what, what you want what it is you're doing. However, once you run some programs, you will have to drive in here this program you're running because uh, this project is actually. Uh, Bookcraft itself doesn't make that much sense to work on Bookcraft from making Bookcraft. So, for, uh, for building Bookcraft, we are actually not using the, the debug of the testing uh, a lot of times. So, and it can simulate that, it, that you are running your program from CLI or from Bookcraft. So, you can yeah, choose whatever you want. And there are also options to, to change the working directory that if you have some. Test days that you can change the working directory before you actually execute it. And the same with the build, you can change your build directory to something else if you don't want to build from inside your, your project directory itself. Yeah, so uh, this is this is basically uh, basically it. Uh, recent is where you can open it. You can open a, a, an old one if it's if it's not in your recent list, and you can make a new one. We will make a new one, new one shortly. Just uh, showing off with the debugger as well. Um, so um, you can run within the debugger, and in that case, whenever you are broken up, uh, you can you can toggle up right points. So say you're 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 here, and then you are pressing F9, it would actually add a break point in this line. So whenever the execution comes to, to this line, it will break, and uh, in that case, you will be able to see the variable. And the call stack at this point. We'll demonstrate that. How we want to use uh, the test program that we have here. So, very simple one. Actually, not that simple, but it's, but it's a free level. There's, there's a main, and that main calls f, and f calls f sub, and then inside f sub we have the breakpoint. So, let's say I want to run it, and then I Press F5, and then immediately we, we are broken here at, at this point, and we can actually uh, uh, take a look down here and see 
all the variables that are uh, defined in this one, and global right now has the value of two, and first has the value of one, two, one, two, one, two. So if we were to set one line, we would be able to see that one, two, one, two, one, two is actually put into to, to this variable and see, see the, the value change. So we can just do that by just uh, step over. And then now it changed down here and, and, and you see the different So classic debugger uh, source level. And in the call stack, you can also see that uh, we started in main and, and, and this, this. these things down here. Those two yeah, those only work for set C at the moment, and it requires something from the, the compiler. So BBCC doesn't provide this information. GCC it does provide some sort of uh, similar information. So in the future, we will likely not promise anything, but it's it's likely we will make a similar so so that it can be used with GCC as well, and maybe with uh, other developers of, of other. Compilers, other languages, uh, E maybe, yes, or base, some basic uh, variants. If, if they provide something that we can use, we could definitely spend some time doing that. Of course, first things first is to actually just get the first version out of this so that they can, can do all these things. Um, so, and, and now if we were to uh, just run it two more times, we would. Get to the end and was out of, out of the program again. No, it's, it stopped. I don't know if you noticed, but up here it says debugging whenever the program is running. So it's a little subtle, but it, it, it will show up here in the line that it's in debugging mode even when the program is running. Of course, you could also just have run the program uh, without the debugger. This program doesn't really do much, so it doesn't make sense. But you could. Anyway, uh, this is enough about CodeCraft itself. It's just a tool for, for, for the actual presentation, of course. Mm -hmm. um, um, before we go on, does anyone have any questions? Yeah. About that one? Uh, I know we got one from online from back at the beginning. I think people are wondering where they should go to to buy this when it's available. If we've had that worked and out. The, box, oh. the boxes and the, uh, the notebooks and all that. Yeah. On the... On, on, on your side, there, there's actually a link to it in, in, in the description of, of this talk. Okay. But also, it's just uh, bowman.dk slash codecraft. Uh, and then you'll be taken to the side, and, and there you can show. But, but the way to, to buy the boxes is simply by, by uh, sending them mail to, to me on When I checked earlier, there was like a one minute lag on YouTube. Yeah. Um, looks like we may be back up. Uh, yes, well, there's something there. <laughs> Put that way. It does look like it's the screen you're on right now. Tell her to move the her icon. So, for anyone on YouTube, we haven't really uh, done, done much while you were offline, you, you noticed. So. Okay, I yeah. didn't hear the answer to the question about where to find the. the Book and box. Um, they didn't see it yeah. on your website. So if, 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 if you go into to to this uh, page here, uh, that's and the. Um, maybe you come to 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 to, to this uh, homepage, and it tells you a little about a bit about what where, where what it is, and you can download the, the latest. Uh, if you have the compiled, as I said, we made it uh, earlier today. And if you click in here, you will see that uh, what the shipping is and, and the cost. And by the way, the cost here will go up to 50 euro uh, 1st of November. So you have like 11 days to get a little bit cheaper. Uh, as I said, I'm, I'm almost certain to make a loss on this. So I, I need to recover at least some of some money. So, yeah. Ah, okay, so it's 45 euros now on the website. Yeah, it is. Okay. And it will go up to 50 when, on, on November 1st. So, yeah. But as I said, if people want to, to, to make some kind of a bulk purchase uh, and, and, 
and from afar. Do the shipping themselves uh, from the US. I'm more than willing. Just get in contact with me. Yeah. 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 This is of course also my email. Uh, Fight so to me on, on that one or find me on Facebook. Yeah. I'm, I'm there by my name as well. So. Something from something besides those four, if you want to make basic, whatever, uh, then there is uh, a way to do that. Uh, uh, maybe get in touch with me if, 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 if you want to do that, or I can certainly help you out and give you some pointers. So. Does it have an AREX port? Can it run scripts? Yes, it, yes, it can. So there's an AREX port, and, uh, and there's even for the extensions a, a direct way to the extension to to execute uh, AREX without going through all, all of the AREX. So uh, if we go in here, for example, I don't know if I can find it. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I can simply execute an AREX command uh, Based on, on on the current document, and then uh, you can can do uh, various things, and uh, yeah. So there's even like an uh, extra cursor, so you actually kind of get an, an extra cursor if you want to do something manipulating the text, but you don't really want to, to move move the, the actual cursor. Then you can say every uh, index cursor on, and then this hidden cursor can go somewhere else and, and do some changes and, and off again, then whatever you uh, send the commands after that will uh, affect the, the actual cursor. So, so th there's a lot of things that, that, that you can do and uh, you can add, if you make an extension like this, then you can actually make it go into these uh, I think it's, it's, it's down here, yes, you can make an, an, an extra uh, item down here. So if you have something special for uh, refactoring tools or, or something you, you want to, to make, then, then you can add, add your menu item there, and you can add your phone menu items there. Of course, you can add a complete menu. And I'm thinking about making maybe, so you can have like a tools menu where you can also just add your phone items if you don't have to add. So, but, the menu. The, the, that's also also. Say the, the menu structure you're saying is is user adaptable. It's it's sort of user adaptable. I mean, these three here are fixed, except that extensions can add uh, items to it. You can add as many menus as you want. However, of course, there's a limit to how wide the screen is, and then you can add your own setting uh, items as well. Right now, the, the save settings doesn't actually save your settings, so you will have to come up with some other way of doing that. Uh, it's it's more than likely that I, that I will somehow sometime find out a way for for the extensions to be notified when to when to save. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So this is this is basically it. Uh, I do want to first show uh, some Git. Uh, this is Git extension. This is a uh, Git that we're developing in. 
and it, it it does show here that that you can have like different branches and and different uh, and then up to the side uh, blue line is your current branch and each of these lines are part of part of commit and and stuff uh, these branch names and and then it's, it's something that will be shown. We will uh, do something similar. It will be a little bit simpler for that today than, than this. So my plan is to open a window. Maybe we will add uh, some uh, a button or two at the top just to show that we can have some buttons up here. Then we will add what is called a list browser uh, in here that, that shows this, and we will add a lot of these three or four items that that's, uh, uh, mimics being commits. And we will also maybe add a uh, click tab area down here with, with some tabs and having uh, maybe a commit and something that looks like this. I don't think we will be able to actually put something in that that, uh, that, that looks and, and, and works uh, correctly, but we, we will get to, to something like that. So, so this is the plan for today. and. One last thing I didn't show about CodeGraph is actually we have templates. So when you go in and say uh, new, this is completely new on, on the version released uh, today. So we could say we want to in uh, this folder, let's call this, uh, I don't know, how's uh, a kid? Uh, the good client that, that this other person is, is working on will be called a, a kid uh, for a media kid. So I think this is as good as name as any for, for, uh, for this project. You can move it afterwards, it doesn't have to, to stay there. Uh, and the name of the project, uh, of course, we will also call that to uh, a kid. And then we can choose, say, we want. To, to make it from a template. And there are right now three different templates and you can do a one if you want. And, and, and they are right now categorized by the, the compiler. So you could categorize them actually any way you want. It's, it's just file folders in, 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 on, on the disk. But so this may change and then there's a description and we want a simple uh, Oh, sorry, we wanted a POSI window application uh, right now, and it's just opening an, an empty window, so hopefully this will not crash or anything, but uh, yeah, so it came up and it has already pulled up the uh, parameters style for us, and it has filled out uh, most of these things for us. Uh, so we call SMAKE, we don't have a, a clean for, for, for this SMAKE file, so instead we're just um, deleting the, the O file for ourselves. You can do it other, otherwise. And in order to run it, we just call browser edit, and now we just start it as if one click CLI, and that's, it. That, that's, that's basically it. So just say OK to this, and then it has also already created a first file for us and then make file. Just take a look at make file. It actually just compiles uh, this single file we have and, and, and creates this. So there's not really much to it. And if you want to, to edit it and, and uh, add more files, we, we can do that. I think today we will just stay with, with one file and maybe in one year we can come back and maybe show more how far I've come with this uh, in the meantime. Maybe not that far, because of course Cocraft has my uh, main attention. Let's see. So, uh, this file it's, itself uh, has already done a lot of work for us, so, so we don't have to do anything. And in fact, if, if we were to say uh, the of 6 to build, then it Build down here, and then we would say uh, run. It will actually already put up this window for us. So um, this concludes uh, today's talk, and you can go. Off, um, no.
Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I want to go through through what it actually does, so otherwise it wouldn't be, be much of a, of a programming uh, talk. So, so the first things we, we, we do, of course, is, uh, is an NAC program, I mean, this is not going to be uh, something that teaches you to program in C, so I'll assume that you are at least, well, at least know something about programming, then you can you can follow along. But, um, so we need to in include a, a lot of um, header files and also protos for the functions we are, we are going to need, and these protos from the uh, NDK uh, also includes some of the structure definitions and defines and, and, and all sorts of things. So we don't need to include, actually we wouldn't need to include, need to include this one because this one will do it for us. Uh, and same with this one. Uh, I don't know why, but they're in there. They could actually be removed. Let's not do it now. Uh, let's let's focus on, on on the next part. But but these things are needed, and later on we will be using uh, different components. And you generally need to have an input file for for each component. And um, there's also like this version string. You just need to have a string that has this uh, this in it, and you can of course change this and maybe later you can, can use some other tool to automatically update this. But for now it's it just has this version string and you can do with it what you want, change it. Uh, and on Amiga you need to have a base pointer to each library that you use. And uh, in well by the way, uh, I call them C classes because that's what they are. Someone, uh, some in I don't know, 92, 93, something around that, uh, the class acts, classes, uh, Poopsie classes were created. They were renamed later to Reaction and was in 3.5, 3.9, and 4.4. Uh, and, and, and they're now in 3.2 as well. Uh, they have been updated substantially in 3.2 uh, and some changes have gone from OS4 to, uh, to these classes and, and some the other way. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not quite up to, to what uh, OS4 does because OS4 has faster graphics and, and stuff. But it's, it's, it's very similar and most of the code can just be recompiled. On OS one, and it, it will work. So you say so not, it is code compatible. It is code compatible with OS four between OS four and OS three. Yeah. 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 It's it's it's. I mean, we haven't tried to compile it, so there may be something with, with the compiler uh, com complaining about uh, small things. But in general, yes, it, it, it would be com compatible on, on OS four as well, and the latest application there. Uh, at, at least this small one here, definitely that there shouldn't be that, that much problem in, in that. The, does uh, CodeCraft generate the make file, or is that something that the the developer has to create? That's, that's something the developer has to, has to do. We, we have these uh, templates, so we, we have a, a start uh, made for you, but it doesn't uh, update it and or, or anything. We are specifically not going to touch that and, and the idea is of course many pro projects already have uh, large build systems and, and how this make file looks internally can be very specific and we, we will simply be unable to, to do anything meaningful with it so for many projects if you have a node project we wouldn't be able to do anything uh, anyway uh, so you're simply uh, leaving that up to, to, the, to the program still it's it's a Design decision, but at least you you, you have the, the building and the department. Okay, so as I said, all of the components that, for example, the window and uh, inside the window there's a layout. Uh, those things need to be uh, those come in in uh, libraries. And sorry. 
Um, yeah, so, so, the, so they come in, in, uh, in libraries and then you need a library pointer to them and, and some of the first things we do in, in main camp here is actually to open those libraries and make sure that we have uh, a window class, which is the window, and we have a gadget called layout gadget. And, and uh, this layout gadget that is inside the window is, is what makes it possible to, to have like uh, dynamic layout of your you know, with buttons and everything. So first thing to do is open those libraries and if something goes wrong we can go down to, to PNX and we can delete things and even delete the object if it is. And there may be some tests and, and, and stuff that, that, that I've missed, uh, missed how I should, I should do in, in order to make good, good programming. But I mean, for now, this is, this is going to be, to be good enough. So once we have opened the libraries, classic open library calls, make sure we have them. Then we call start UI, which is uh, this function up here. And, and what this does is actually, it first creates uh, the layout that is supposed to go inside the window. And we don't actually check if, if this uh, succeeds or not, because we are only having a pointer from it, and we are just passing it in here uh, when we create the, the window object itself. And, and the smart thing about reaction is actually that if this fails and it, it was a, a null pointer, then the creation of the window will also fail. It will detect that you gave it a null pointer. So don't ever give it a null pointer uh, here because then you will not open the window. So we don't have to check on this unless we are actually using it for something else, which would of course uh, would be a bad thing if, if we didn't check it. But uh, then you can just check on, on, the, on the final uh, object you made. And if you have that, you're good to go. Uh, otherwise, you will have to fix and maybe you should, of course, say what happened and why it didn't work. And, uh, yeah. But for now, let's let's just assume that things do work. And and what we then do is actually ask it to open a window. So this window update is like um, an abstract thing. It's it's it's. It's, uh, it's an instance of a class, but it isn't actually the physical window. In order for, 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 the, for the, this window object to become an actual physical window, uh, you have to call a method on it. So call do method on the window object, and the method, method you want to call is uh, VM open, and that will actually pop up the window for you. And as a result of that, you will get appointed to the old intuition window. Uh, so you should be aware that window object and intuition window are, are two different things. And if somehow you couldn't open it, well, then we just give up and make clean it, etc. as well on this window object and it disappears. Then we do all sorts of uh, process events, and when we're done with that, we say, well, let's call VM close, just as we did up here on, on our object. This will close uh, the window, and then we do just do our clean exit. And that's it. So the only really interesting thing that is left is actually the process events. And that function is also one we have written, and it's, it's down here. And, and, and what you do here is actually first you get, uh, you ask your window objects for an attribute called the signal mask, and, and that you will store inside here. So you need to have the address to your ULOM and then it will store the signal mask inside window signal. And this is how of course Amiga OS is built up by sending signals to, to tasks. Every task has up to 32 signals it, it, it can, can be signaled on and whenever a signal arrives to the task it will come alive if it's, if it's waiting for it for the signals. So so what, what we do here is say, let's wait until we get the signal. And so the only thing that can wake us up uh, from this wait is actually if, if the signal comes in and out of the window, nothing else will actually wake us up. 
and then if we get this signal back, this is a uh, signal we have received, and in theory we should then be, be checking if this received signal is a uh, signal from uh, is this window signal. However, since this is the only one we are waiting for, it doesn't really matter. In any case, you can call uh, this handle method even if you didn't receive a signal. Uh, that, that's actually also why we have this while loop, because we need to be sure that, that there are no more uh, events waiting for us uh, before going back in, into waiting mode. Yeah, so, uh, so we have the, we've received the signal and, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, and then just uh, uh, waiting and seeing uh, that, that this isn't the last message that, that we re received uh, in this loop, and we get it, and then we have the, the result code here, and part of that result code is, is masked out. So this will tell us which class message it is, and if it's a closed window message, then we just say end is true, and then we get out of this loop, and we call clean exit, and actually then we're done. Yeah, so actually this may fail, but that's, uh, anyway, uh, that's maybe something that, that we need to fix once we, we go go into more depth uh, with how, how this is done. Uh, so that's that's basically it. We, we open the window and wait for, for, for the close to the kick. So open the window and when we pick close, that's when we loop out again and close everything up. So it's actually quite, quite simple and uh, not that difficult to make. There may be a lot of, lot of text here, but that's what this template is for, so we don't have to, to write all this uh, to start with. Now, the window we make, we ask for, for, for various things about it. We ask it to be sent it on, on the screen when it's opening up. We could uh, not do that if we didn't want to. Mm -hmm. let's, let's just do that. We ask it to be active when it starts. You can actually just say, uh, just open it and, and leave the other window you have uh, active if you don't want that. Type bar, you have to say one it should be breakable. So we have a close gadget, a depth gadget, uh, this one, a size gadget in the corner, and then we can say it should have inner width and inner height of this many pixels. And uh, then it also says that we want to, to listen for a close window, which sort of is important because we want to be know it. So when, when, when this closes. And then the final thing is that we say what is the layout that should be in this uh, window. And this is just a pointer up here, as I said earlier. And a uh, layout can hold more gadgets inside of it uh, almost automatically, and we will be, be doing that uh, very shortly. Uh, so, um, uh, these other things here, the fur layout, that means that when uh, the window is resized or for other reasons we, it has to relay it out itself. Where should this take place? Should this take place inside the uh, intuition or should it take place inside the, the program itself? And if you defer layout, that means you defer it from being in intuition into being in inside uh, our program. So set this to true makes the system more responsive. There may be reasons for, for not doing that, but in general, uh, that's, that's true. Uh, space inner, so it, if that's true, it puts a little margin on, on, on the inside. And, oh sorry, that's space inner, that's between the elements, and space outer is, is, is the, the margin on the outside. There are also other things, so you can uh, specify exactly how many pixels should be on, on each side, but in general, don't do that because that, that would override your system settings. So unless you have specific uh, reasons for, for setting a space to zero, or, 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 then, then don't touch it. In, in general, just, just leave it to the 
OS to, to, to decide how many pixels there are. So, uh, pretty basic actually, and if we now want to uh, have something else inside it, we would probably like to have a... Well, oh, yeah, and the other thing is which direction is this layer going, and, and as you saw earlier, this one is more or less uh, organized by having menu bar, list browser, and something below, so it should be a, a vertical uh, layout, so you have something on top of another. And once we get down to, to this one, which has something side by side, then you will add uh, another layout inside that is on the other, uh, other direction, so it, it will go mostly like the outer layout will have, have something like the, the buttons up top, the list browser here, and then it would have uh, a horizontal layout below, and this horizontal layout will then be divided in, in two parts uh, or, or more, depending on how much that's That's basically the, the idea of making a UI. You make components and put them inside each other. Uh, actually, you, the only way you can really put something inside another is, is by having, having a layout. So you have a lot of layouts, and and then at the end you have buttons and things like that. There are a few other gadgets, classes that, that can also have uh, chat children. Uh, one of them is uh, the click tab down here. It can have. Uh, <coughs> But yeah, what it actually is doing is it's reusing or depending on, on a another other class called the page, which instead of having your gadgets side by side, have them in a C stack, so on top of each other, and, and that's how, how this is uh, actually implemented. We will get to that maybe uh, at the end. Time is running, so let's actually do something. One. So, if we want to, to say, okay, we want to have uh, uh, the list browser uh, at, at the top. Okay, so let's do that. We will uh, then need uh, another object. So let's make a pointer for it and call it uh, permit browser. And Basically, we will follow sort of the, the, the same same idea here. So we have the uh, the, the, uh, the permit uh, browser is equal to, and then it will be a uh, list browser as, and in order to go. Yes, um, the team. Oh, I had it down there. And so, in, in order for, for this function to be available, in order to, to, to make sure that we can open this, uh, then we need to open the, the library and, and, and all these kinds of things. So, we also uh, we need here the list browser base, and we need to have the For this browser, uh, and of course we also need to have uh, actually call it some people. Let's say for now let's just uh, make make it almost empty. Uh, and then down here when we open the libraries, we of course need to open this this browser. Um, library as well, which contains the list browser class. And finally, when we are closing things down again, we also uh, Need to close it again. So now we have created it up here, there. And then we need to put it inside the main layout. And the way you do that is just to say layout 
that child, uh, that child, and then with pointed to your uh, your class or object, and 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 that's it. If you want to make some modification to how this uh, this this in, works inside, you after you've added it, you can with a lot of uh, child tags modify the, the size and, and, and the width uh, of it and, and, and we will get back to that quite soon. I'm just saying it's, it's, it's you, you add something and then with these child ones you specify how, how it, uh, well you modify how it's used and then after you've modified it you can then say okay. Then we want to add another child and modify that. Another child modify that. So, so that's how, how we actually in, uh, uh, add them into. The, uh, oh, by the way, now uh, maybe it didn't fail. Should have failed. Let's see. Yeah. This effect will actually uh, see the see the warning there and we actually replace. So if we were down there and 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 uh, pressed, then we would automatically jump to, to the location that that is So that's just another thing. So of course we will not be able to allow to have uh, to, to have that one right now. And see if we have something that's going. To. Suddenly we have uh, inside our window a list box. So this is really really cool already. Looks great. We can uh, resize it, and reaction or the classes will, will will take care of all of this uh, for us. So it's nothing we have to, to think about. Uh, now, looking back here, you can see that this one here actually has uh, is able to be, be resized down here, and and this layout is actually uh, able to to do this for us as well. I believe you have to say, and you have to do this quite weirdly in front of the ad child. Uh, so, so uh, ad child, wait, bar, and this needs to be true. Uh, then, then there would be a, uh, way past such a, a resizer uh, before it. This is too early, so let's just put it uh, down here for later. But but this is this is how you do it, and then you will will get this uh, resizer like we have here, so you can change it exactly the same way. We'll get back to that uh, very shortly. Uh, we need something to have below. And what we want to have below here is uh, maybe for now just just another list browser because then we can move a little faster. But so so we will have uh, something that says uh, uh, put this down here and say it's it's a files browser. We have another one down there. And the first one, we have the, the files browser below. And in order to have this wait by in, in between them, we need to So let's try and build that. Uh, and, and now we have two, and we are able to uh, resize those two between each other. Uh, 
So basically, how 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 it works? How it works? It, uh, it may be that we, that when we start up, we want to have it, have say sixty uh, percent for this year, and then forty percent for, for for this below. And the way we do that is 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 also with this child. So we can say child. Uh, oh, what is it? Uh, uh, with, uh, sorry, I'm just, uh, let's do something else. Let's go to the NDK and then just uh, include file inside the gadgets and in this browser. And here you can actually, if you're in doubt, you can also, of course, look in, look in the documentation bar. But, but they are all, all in here, and we want to find the the ones that are called child. Oh, not this browser. Oh, sorry. Layout. Uh, it's so. So the, the child ones here, and then they have this that is weighted high. If we were to say weighted high, and we want the first one to have uh, sixty percent. And the other one, also weighted high, we want to have that 40% uh, when, when we start up. Maybe we should make our uh, a lot higher or a lot wider. Let's make it 600 by 350, so that's some, some size. The build, I don't know if you saw it, but I pressed F6 to build, and now F5 to run. So now it's much larger, and, and the proportions between the, the, the top and the, and the bottom has been, been made. And, and so, so this is the, the, the first step. Uh, you may want to, to change this into a quick tab. We'll do that if we have time. We have one hour left. So uh, we can add a couple of buttons up at the top first. So let's let's do that. Uh, and in order to have buttons side by side, they need to be inside a, a layout as well. Uh, and, and, okay, so um, yeah. Uh, Uh, so we need a let's call it a button layout, which is what we will have at the top, and this should be a layout as well. So let's just more or less copy what we have here already and place it in the order they also appear to make it simple. So this layout at the top, which will hold our the buttons. And will be called button layout instead. Uh, it's, it's also layout, but this should be horizontal. So, and so it's horizontal, or at least we I believe it's called horizontal. Uh, we can check control horizontal. Uh, okay, thank you. And we'll use both. Now we have some spacing all around. It doesn't make sense to have spacing all around the button as well, so, so we will not have a, an, an outer uh, spacing for, for our buttons. Oh, sorry, this should be false. Uh, but we may want, or we should want, uh, spacing between, uh, between the buttons. So the inner spacing should still be true. And then, of course, these. Uh, things that we add uh, needs to be well, definitely we don't want to wait for to get the buttons up there and and also we say uh, button one and button two and what you can do if you don't want them to, to 
take up so much space, you can just say they should have zero percent. They will not actually be uh, have no space. They they will get their minimum size. So so it's a good idea if you just want them to have the and then it's width. Now two buttons. We haven't made those buttons. We will. So now we have a, a button layout at the top. We should also put this into our main layout. So let's uh, insert this, and this is button layout. And just as with with the buttons, where we said we give them a height of zero, we can also do that, that with with the layout on top, and say have a, have a height of zero. Uh, with, not a height, but, but a uh, weighted height uh, of zero up here. Then we'll just get uh, a minimum uh, 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 height that it, that it can do. do. We haven't added the buttons yet, so we need to have those as well. And next we have button one, <coughs> button two. And in order for, for us to have the buttons, we need to go through the same dance we, we, we did earlier. So we have, need to have a library for the buttons. So it's uh, button base. And we need the file up here. And so that was the base, then we need to open the library. Let's do this down here. And it should be coming back here. By the way, if anyone has any questions, just I mean please uh, just ask ask away. Uh, so yes, we have the button base, we make the gadget. I had a question for the code, for, uh, code craft. Um, yeah. For, for the functions, is there anything that can be done to like go to definition into the ADK and just show okay what the arguments are needed for open library? Is there any way that that can be can be added? Like they, uh, whether or not you could have it so it would show you the syntax of the commands. Yeah, the syntax of the commands. Like uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's uh, yeah, the, definitely something we we want want to do uh, eventually. It's it's not our focus right now, but right. but yes, we, we, we definitely want to, to do this. Uh, our plan for for most uh, command is, is to actually, and we also want to have like completion. So with uh, you press control space, then it will uh, either give you the options in a pop down window uh, or right. or it will. Uh, so, so actually, these things are sort of already there. You actually uh, saw some of it earlier, uh, almost by mistake. But when I search for for this thing here, uh, we were actually looking. Uh, in this uh, code craft or the extension is has on. Um, actually, this is. Uh, uh, you can add a change listener to, to the text gadget. So this is to, to the gadget itself and, and, and not to the text edit. You can do this if you have your own text edit, editor gadget. But you can add a, a change listener and then you will be called on, on whenever characters are entered or, or deleted and, and stuff. Uh, and, and sorry, mostly entered. Uh, uh, but you can, you, can, uh, you can listen and what we played a little around with here is that you you, you were uh, listening for the the larger than sign and the, the dots. So when, when you were typing in a, a structure and, and a dot something, it will bring up this 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 window and there's an uh, rex command for that in uh, well in in the text editor uh, class itself. Where, where you can say, say, I believe, I, I, it's a long time since I, I, I tried this out, 
but say what is it you have typed and what are the options that, that it should, should bring you and then then it will, will, will do this for you so it will bring up like a, like a short window where your cursor is with, with the options of, of, of uh, completing so that is one thing we, we, we have a little bit of work on already and and your question about uh, showing the syntax uh, we plan on, on having support for using a C tags in order to, to get uh, some information and for the OS variables or functions we may want to do something special for those so they are faster sort of the same thing um, so so yes it's definitely something we, we plan to do again it's it's a little little later because we have lots of bands and we want to support GCC we want to maybe support OS4, we want to, to do that, and then, yeah, so, actually, we, in, in, you can see that we want, to, we have some things we want to do, as I said, we would like to have this popping in or out, be able to search in files, uh, do the CTAC support, as we just talked about, the code completion that I just uh, do, we would also be somehow, I would like to be able to somehow stop the debugger by force, Right now, of course, Amiga OS is uh, not very good at killing tasks because then you have a lot of resources open that, that you may use, So, and you, Amiga OS doesn't have resource tracking as such. So stopping it from the outside is uh, risky, to put it mildly, uh, mildly, mildly. Uh, and uh, yeah, so lots of things that, that can, can be done we're uh, thinking about those maybe just putting the, the tasks to eternal sleep to not forget the memory but at least it, it will be there uh, so lots of good ideas that, that we that we have and definitely uh, c tags uh, or Both completion that's also here, but also for the for the uh, the syntax and, and being able to show that uh, definitely in, in, our, in our list of ideas. We have a lot of things that we still want to, to do. Uh, some of them are done, but uh, we want to be able to, to not only to step into and step up, step over, but we also want to step out. The return oh, and, and, and break, just saying break as soon as you can. Uh, and uh, yeah, so lots of ideas on, on, on what we want to do. And what we have up here is in our to do list is maybe, hopefully, what we will be able to do before the, the, um, the uh, release of 1.0 version. We also have a, a Online updates. Oh, yeah, so we have uh, there's this uh, menu, or, uh, not menu, uh, help document, uh, Amiga guide documents that have helped along, and we want to, to write uh, something on, on this. We, of course, have something written already, uh, but we want to, to write more, and we want to make this into a PDF so that actually. There's something that goes go into the box. It's, it's empty right now, and that's by purpose because this uh, manual uh, will will grow and evolve over time. So we will just uh, publish the PDF, and then people can print the new version. And also, uh, what is sold in this is also besides the one disk with, with, with the label, uh, there are actually five more labels for disks 2, 3, 4, up to disk 6, and right now we only have one disk, so it's future-proof in that sense as well, so we'll have disk labels for, for the future when, when, when it grows. Uh, so, lots of plans, and it will happen slowly. Um, yeah. By the way, uh, this debugging with the variables and, and, and call stack, that's actually uh, an old uh, format 
that the SAS made and didn't really publish the specifications for. So a lot of the, the, the work we have done uh, is actually in uh, trying to, to reverse engineer uh, how, how this old for format worked. And we have painstakingly uh, found out what every little bit all along in this huge format does. So this took, took us uh, almost half a year and slowly we are we're getting to the point that, 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 that it actually works. The only things we, we don't have working yet is uh, bit fields and uh, enums, but all the rest seems to be working, uh, even small and, and, and far memory models and also near and far memory models. Uh, yeah. All of these things we, we, we do them, and so, so it, it was really fun. But also, I should say this is not my work alone. Uh, this is the main developer, but uh, Ralph has been helping me uh, uh, for for the past year, and we have had sessions uh, on Discord uh, almost every Saturday and Sunday, two to three hours each time, and and he's been uh, a great uh, help. I've been on the keyboard, but he's uh, kept an eye on what I've been doing all the time, so it's always good and to have something to just bar with. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's get back to, to the other things, and, and again, just switching and then I'm back to, to the work we were working on before. It's, do this pretty easy. Of course, I'm running within within Win UAE and JIT is uh, enabled, and there's fast, uh, actually, no uh, slowness of, of the blitter. And so it, it is fast, but as any programmer knows, waiting for for a compiler to finish is, is mostly just wasted time. So uh, that's that's one of the concessions I, I, I make. I like it to work within. What I call within the Amiga, even though this is of course this with UID, uh, but it's it still uh, it still feels real to me. And of course, if you had a, a vampire or a Pystorm or even even a fast 060 or something, that, and and running on, on a uh, four or eight color puppetry, and then it would feel almost as fast. Uh, I haven't tried that myself, but. It, it, Probably will. In any case, we cannot do anything about how slow uh, a compiler is, and that's slow as well. So you, you do want the, as fast as the system as, as you can get, unless you really want to have the old school experience. And, yeah. Up to you. I, I like Probably this so. being on uh, on the OS, but but not having to to be too slow. Anyway, we were in, in the middle of, of adding some buttons, so we opened the library, and we should also remember to close the library. That's more or less all of those things, so... I think we can just stay up here, we want the... So this was button one, and then of course none of this applies. So we have the button one, and uh, I believe this is how it is. Let's see what else they did. Uh, oh, she why did it get? Oh, we have declared them both, but this second one is still zero. Yeah, so so we need, to, of course, to initialize number two as well. Oh, initialize create the class. So we have B2 here. And let's build that. And let's try and run it. And, well, at least B1 was there. So B1, B2 wasn't. I wonder what we did wrong. B2 was there. It was just all the way to the right. Oh, 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 yes, of course, yeah, so, so, uh, 
something after the end is to, to, to be, be, be put in and uh, yeah, we yeah. could put in a, another could put button in a, or make this... You could do another layout, a horizontal layout this. with the buttons. Yeah, 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 with, with no buttons and, and just say that this should take up uh, all, the, all the space. I mean, th there's lots of things we could do. I'm just going to, to do the really simple thing and just say button number two should take up the remaining space. Uh, just uh, yeah, so so now they're there, and, and we do have the buttons, and later on we will hopefully may, maybe uh, be able to do something with them. I don't know. Um, so let's put something into the list. So it it, uh, it, it looks like something with, that that could be with a lot of comments, and if we uh, again go back to here you, you can see that it actually has several columns it has a column out here that that's something like, like graphical column, column and it has uh, the name of the commit of the commit, commit text it has the committer it has uh, a date and then it has the i think it's the, the share or the hash uh, has hash key for, for the commit uh, if if we wanted to have all of those, I don't know. But let's let's just play with the idea that we that we have all of those uh, one, two, three, four, five columns. Actually, let's forget about the last one for now. We can always go set that later. So one, two, three, four columns. Uh, so if we want to have columns in here, we we need before we actually treat oh. Did that my machine just die? It did. Yeah. Wait. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so before you create the uh, this browser, the commit browser here, then you need to set up all, all the uh, what's it called? It's the column info, and actually, let's just uh, go into Procraft and, for example, check out how we do it in the, the variable browser because that's the one we have done here where we search things and. So, great. So the thing we want to do is live uh, streaming has stopped. Perfect. So are we, are we I back? think we're back on, right? I think we're all connected. You can hear yes. us. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. All right. I think we're all reconnected. Let's see how long this lasts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it lasted for one and a half hour this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we could get done before it stops again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll put more quarters on the machine. Is your hotspot your phone? Okay, they, they said so, they can wipe out. Uh, Plug it in. Is it working? Is yeah, it? the people online are saying they can hear it and see it. Think we're back. Offline or just Live offline, again. offline just to cover something uh, from the other. That was the bathroom break. If you didn't make it, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the list is what will hold the content in, in, in our in our list, and the column info is what will define the, the columns. So, first thing we do is just say uh, new list. Uh, the list so it's, it's an empty list. Sure. And you switch top in there. Uh, then you specify. Again, on when you create the, the list browser. Camilla, it looks like we see. Oh, oh there we go. Your screen's back. Uh, this is the one. Labels. Oh, just labels, and then point it to the list. It's just a empty uh, list, but. Yeah, that's it. And the other 
project for the other one, so we will have to, to, to do more, but uh, we'll get to that before we build. I just want to, 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 to see here, and then we have a column info here. So it's point of column info. Camilla, it looks and like we keep that. getting your, uh, moving well. your screen yeah. image. And that's I'm not on YouTube. Now we have to find the problem. It's delayed. Yeah, there's a delay, but it's there. It's been a del it's been delayed the whole time. Hmm. Right. Where is where is we go there? Or is, so maybe it's on your end. There you go. There's two options there. If you click on the journal right side of the bottom. Can you click on the right side of the bottom? Hotspot's not working at all. I don't know why. Oh, Live streaming yeah. is on. Am I moving through? Did I lose everyone for a while again? You're seeing a delay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, we, we're, we're, we're quite unstable on my side right now. We still hear you. So can you hear us now? She says she can hear us. Okay. So, oh, so somehow we lost our speakers. Is it on? Off? Or it needs to be, be reconnected with Bluetooth? Yeah, we lost our Bluetooth speakers. Well, checking Windows. Maybe Windows has killed it. That's what I'm thinking. That's the reason why I said bottom line. Testing, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Somehow we lost Bluetooth and all that as well. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, perfect, perfect. Good, All right. good back. Okay. Uh, as I've been trying to say a couple of times, we set up the, the column lists available here, so we define the column info, we'll say four columns, and these are the width we want. And then we want to have a, a node also with four columns, and it's important that you don't specify more than you have access that you want to, to allocate. To the, uh, so beware. Thing. This is fixed in, 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 in a newer version, but older versions will definitely not check if you go beyond what you should should go here. So make sure that what you allocate or the say there is is also no more than what you're defining. So uh, let's just say we have here it. Let's put it A. Um, we have here uh, that should be the committer name. So let's send that to myself. And on column three, uh, this is where we want to have uh, page. So let's just say today. And the rest is, of course, not relevant. Yeah. This is how you make a single node. I haven't actually declared this node here. Do that. No. no. And once we have made, made the node, we can add a to our family list. It's a node that we want to add. So, we mute our commit list, we create the column info, we have actually added a single node to, to the list, and all of these things are now specified here when we create the gadget, saying this is the column info and this is the list. Um, hopefully, if I haven't made any mistakes, it will work. It should be there. So, it, uh, it, it, it shows these things, and actually, we only have three. So maybe I should have specified width on, on this this one here. Oh, that's a bit of zero. So just say it's uh, four hundred. Mac, actually, you can think and say wait and say this. Yeah. Oh. We now have uh, the the, uh, the space out here where we want to have this this graphic shown. We have the name of the commit, we have the name of the committer, and we have a date. All looks very nice. Uh, I don't want to have these uh, separators here, and we can oh, sorry we can uh, remove those. Oh. As I said, I think it crashes when when I'm shutting down, and I think I know why. It's, it's the template we're using, it's, it has a bug. I noticed that earlier, so let's go and fix this. Uh, what happens is that when we click uh, exit, we call clean exit, and then, then, uh, and then this, this quits. However, after we call clean exit, the, this function stops, present events function stops, and we go up uh, back here to the stack view thing here, and we come out of the process events, and then we call clean exits once more and dispose the object that is already uh, deleted. So this is actually not, not very good. Uh, I think we should just do these things here uh, because it will happen when we call when we leave here and we call clean exit. Then all of these will be, we don't actually have to, to close the window when we dispose the object. The window will close itself. So I think this will take care of the what we crash we just have to this, this plan. Yes. It, it, 
Um, so, yeah, what did we have? We have this uh, list here with, with, with our commit in it. Uh, we can click on it, but it, uh, once I release the mouse, it will uh, let's show the one I picked up. And this is normal in here to have something that you click on. You can actually un unclick, so it's, it's okay to, to have zero uh, and and you will also be able to select more than one. So we should have something like multi select, and we should uh, show the, the selection we have. So if we want to have these things in here, the things that, that we want to, to ask for here is when we create the list browser here. This to say uh, list browser show selected. That's, that will make uh, it show the selection, and not just when you click on it. So it will always show show what is selected. And we also want to have uh, once it uh, select. I believe it's multi selects. I can't remember exactly. If it's not, we will have to, to look it up. It's close enough. Uh, it was. So we can have both of these now. And if we run, it will, when we click on it, remember that it's selected. And if we have more, we can multi select on this one. So this is, this is good. Oh, and then I talked about not wanting to have these uh, divider lines here. Uh, it's it's a question if, if you want it or not, but I think it's, it's a bit too heavy. At least this one would be, be too heavy. Maybe we would want it over here. Let's, let's just uh, remove them. And the way we have here, it, it was, uh, let's see if I here. So when we define the, the, the column info, CI meaning color info. Uh, we can say if we want to have separated or not. It's default and true. But when we define the columns up here, we can just say false. Let's do that for uh, all of them. Or we can just yeah, let's do it for all of them. Doesn't matter what the last one. But yeah. So now we have that and run. Oh, oh, sorry. That was these separators are actually up in top. Ah, let's find more, one more. There's one more to define. I think it's on this one. Does it mean separators? Vertical separators. And it must be that one, right? So, yeah. Uh, and that's as a list property tag, so this, this goes down here. Let's set this to false. The other one we, we had uh, when we define the columns is actually if you have like a, a headers for, for the columns, and then 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 this will show if you have separators up there. Specify them separately. Um, so now we don't have any, and we still have this. And well, let's make a function that can add these commits and, let, uh, and then just add, add a, a bit more. So let's make a function that says uh, insert commit and then let's say it should take the list. So it should take these uh, lists. And then maybe only the, the text. So uh, in this case, maybe any and, and nothing else. Let's make a function that's something like this. Just copy this for now and then just deleting the down one. And if we go up here somewhere, uh, like here, and say void. To have a node, node, do this instead of the commit text here. We say commit text with that in, just leave the other things. 
And we have the commit list that should now be a pointer. So let us drop uh, the list and the pointer to that. And over here we want to have a string pointer to uh, call the text. So let's put this one up there. Uh, and then of course we shouldn't take a pointer to something that is already a pointer. So we lose that one down there. So now this will create the node and insert it into the list. Perfect. Uh, let's approve it. Probably more. Just do that and test it out. And then we have commit A, B, and C. So we have something to, uh, to play with. Uh, now, for drawing these lines over here, that, that, would, that would be really nice. And obviously, uh, a standard list here cannot show anything uh, like graphics in, in it or stuff like that. However, there is a way around that uh, because you can have, um, let's see, it's, it should be in the node. Oh, we have way down here. Uh, there is a render hook uh, that you can specify for 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 each column in a node, so node column. So when we create the the column up here and create the first column, uh, we put specify, oh, let's do one more copy. We could specify this one, or in the book. Uh, by the way, the way, way this works is that first you specify which column you want to, to make changes to, and then the the ones with, with C in relates to that column, and then when you say column one, then the ones with the C in relates to the column, the last specified column. So, so this is how it works. There are also uh, some without the C, except uh, column here specifically, but there are a few others that, that also specify on, uh, more generally. If the, if, it, if the node is selected, you can set some flag, you can set some user data that's just pointing to some data of your own. The, the column that specifies the column for what we saw just before. And then, of course, there's all these uh, ways to, to do things. And, th and that, that's there's different ways to, to, to do this graphic uh, out in the site there. You, you could make an image and, and, and just say that this is the image you want me to, to draw. Uh, but then you would have to make your image yourself and make sure that has the input and, and the other uh, ways to do it. This is what we're trying to do here is to have this render hook. Uh, and then we... Uh, Let's call it commit lines hook. So uh, we need this. In order for this to work, we have we need to have, have this uh, hook so we can specify. And and, and in order to, to do that, you need to of course have this I love info in here, but now let's make a uh, Global uh, function for this, and say from yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It's just up there. Uh, so now we are specifying it. It's, uh, uh, but it needs to be set up, of course. So let's go now. Uh, uh, somewhere. It doesn't really matter. We have given the the pointer to it already. So. We just need to set it up, and then, uh, yeah, we, we need, uh, uh, I need to see how this actually, uh, that's, it's going to, Grab something from from the over here. So if you look 
Oh, actually, the first thing we need to have is, is a function. So let's, let's copy this one. It's actually not one we're going to use, but let's copy it anyway. And then it's defined here. And then we can say, uh, commit line entry. And it takes still things. It's standard. Every hook works this way. So it doesn't matter which hook we took, just this is the hook. And we have to find a function. And the other thing we did with the hook over here was to set it up. So this is a hook structure. And then you set these three uh, fields. Actually, we don't need to set the data. So let's make it a little bit simpler. We have here. Uh, let's copy this away and then just do some insert like this. This is actually also part of the text fitted, but you can like make uh, rectangularizations and uh, replacements. And, yeah, so that's, that's very nice. And then do this one and specify this one. Here and the data will just say null for now. So, so what we've done is we have set up a, a hook. This is a struct of a hook that we're giving in to when we define the nodes. So this is how it knows what to call in order to, to render these lines for, to the side. We have specified how the hook is. It has a, a, an entry and and. This follows the uh, assembly code convention. You may want to have uh, this calling a C uh, function convention, or you can just implement it directly. Uh, the reason, if uh, so, if you have assembly code, you can yeah, actually this is what would be called, and 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 you could have like a small stuff here that, that actually calls your, your C C version of it. But since we can in C I'm oh, sorry, in, in SSC. Uh, Define that this function takes takes arguments on, on the registers directly. It, we, we don't have to, to to do all these sorts of things. So now, in order to actually uh, draw something in here, which would be of course very nice, uh, we need to to call some uh, functions, graphic functions, and in order to have the graphic functions, we need to have the Prototype for those. So, uh, leave it graphics. I'm not actually quite sure if it's GFX. So, but let's say we have this one and it needs a, a RAS port and, and then it needs a, a position and then a draw also needs a, a RAS port and also needs a position. So now we have actually drawn something. Of course, we don't have the rest board, and these numbers are, are not correct. So where to draw to, and which uh, location to, to draw to? Well, let's again go back to this uh, this browser header file and see. So there are all sorts of uh, actually these are messages. Uh, let's, let's find those. Uh, it's it's like some some like uh, draw message yeah so this is the one uh, yeah so and 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 the objects that we also get in as it says we get according to to the according to the book pointed to an object and, and the message. So message is, is, is the one we see here. So we could spare ourselves a little casting and just say instead of this, it is actually, oh, I think that is G missing there. Yeah, so this is this is it. Let's actually just copy most of that over just to see. And so uh, we should actually test that, that method ID is uh, uh, the 
is this. So let's say if uh, message find uh, this one. Sorry. Is not LB four. Let's just return and return value. So let's just return zero. That's nice. Now we don't have, have any use for this part anymore. And the rest port is also here, as you can see, it's according to the rest port. So very simple. Just paste this one in here. Of course, we have, need to have it come from the message, so we need to have this as well. Oh, what did I do there? Paste. Like this. So we now have the uh, rest board. Draw info would be, of course, nice if, if we wanted to, to use text colors and, and, and these other colors. but. For, uh, for what we're doing here with, with, with the kit, we want to have these with, with specific colors, so uh, text colors and selected colors, and, and these things are probably not so useful for us. So let's just not uh, draw any of that. Uh, state would probably be, be nice to, to know because uh, we are responsible now for. Actually, and then that's the reason for having the draw info, but we will be responsible for, for drawing it in selected and not selected state. So, but let's make it simple for now, and then we just have this uh, bounce here. So, let's copy this and just say one more message and bounce, and, and then as a min x. I think I lost either a sound or everything again. I don't know if you're still with me or not. Uh, yeah, we're here. We're muted. Uh, looks okay, like we're missing the pointer you reference on the message, on the move and draw statements. Uh, on the say left. again. Yeah, yeah. The first one though, because you copied in earlier. Oh, we're missing. Yeah, yes. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Still complaining about LB draw. Uh, oh, that's not the time. So it's supposed be that. Let's go draw. Oh, LB. Oh, this is a bug draw, I'm sorry. Spelling mistake. Mm -hmm. Uh, this browser draw that makes so much more sense. Perfect, now we're running, and let's hope things don't crash. Oh, don't. See, so now we draw a line from top left to bottom right, so we have drawn these lines, so we have actually created our own graphics here. And now, of course, the, 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 the really tough part, which has not really anything to do with media. And, and, and UI would be able to make these lines uh, crawl in and out with arrows and, and, and stuff, like, stuff depending on, on, on the commit history. So let's not do this here. It would be quite a lot of work to, to get this correct. However, the, the idea is clear that if we can draw something here, that, that will look like that. 
and you can use colors uh, if, if that's what you want. We have made the, the buttons up here. We also put something down here uh, for now with nothing in it. Uh, I don't think we have time to actually make it a, a click uh, tap gadget, but the idea is sort of the same. You, you create a, a click tap, uh, make it uh, open the click tap uh, library, and then you uh, make an object with the click tap, and then you add the tabs, and inside you, you for example, add this browser or something else or another layout, and then, and then, then you can uh, tap between them. And the effect, of course, would be exactly the same as we have here. But it's, so, uh, same sort of idea. Uh, for the buttons in the, in the top, there's also called something like uh, speed buttons, where it's one large uh, gadget that just has some sub images, and, and you can use those and you can define them to have. So they actually look sort of like buttons and have groups. Uh, in this case, I've asked them to not have buttons, so it becomes a bit lighter to look at. Um, but yeah, so you could do that for, for the buttons on, on top instead of having uh, real buttons. You will not be able to have it one huge speed, speed bar at the top because, as you can see, uh, it will probably be a, a good idea to have. Uh, Choosers, which is called in, in, in Amiga. This is a chooser. Uh, so, and, and this cannot be inside a speed bar, but this, for example, th these three buttons, if we were to replicate exactly how this looks, so this could actually be a speed button, and then this could be some other button. We probably will need a refresh button anyway. And, and then we could have uh, this chooser and another chooser. And, and this, yeah, this, that, that's the idea. And in order to add menus to, to your window, it's actually quite simple. Uh, uh, you just uh, define, you know, uh, new menu, the get tools all uh, structs. So you still define something like this. Now, of course, this. I cannot just copy it over, so we cannot try it out quickly. Maybe we could. Uh, uh, oh, let's go back. <coughs> uh, so if we were to really quickly uh, make a single title and then just give it. Text, public power menu, give it nothing else, and then I believe at the bottom you need to have this N. Struct. We don't even have to call all this function to, to set things up. You can just give it give it the structs and, and directly. Uh, of course, in order to do that, you actually do need the the get tools uh, header files. So let's just quickly get those in as well, just to make it compile. Oh, it's also actually not BA, it's window. Expected. Uh, oh, uh -huh. Build, running, and then our menu. Of course, we have no items in it, but 
but we have BitMega on it, so it's pretty fast to, to, to put a menu in as well. And the way you, you, you find the menu is, is sort of the same way when you find uh, close to menu, main case for, for menu, and then from the other part of the results, from the, then you say menu mask, and then you can find out which menu item was actually clicked, and then you can do uh, whatever you want based on, on the menu that is selected. So I think I will, will stop just around here, but uh, within yeah. one and a half hour from when we started, we actually were able to make this window with all these things in it, and well, it's something that could be a, a real menu one day, and, and we could select these things. Uh, oh, you know, something broke. I ah, don't know why. But yeah, so uh, yeah, we, we could go on and on, and obviously, uh, yeah, uh, maybe next next year I can, I can come back and, and show how, how far this has come, or maybe, yeah. maybe people can just follow along. And, and, yeah. yeah, we'd love to have you back next year and, and, and see where you're at. Um, you, you covered a lot of ground today. This has been, I found this to be very fascinating.